Hi, I'm Brian English, forum name Hyperbytes, and having viewed the last um, PouchDB video that I did, I really wasn't comfortable that it was uh, showing it off to its best, or frankly that the video was ter terribly good. So I thought, now is the time to redo it. I uh, hope to be able to give a lot more explanation as to uh, what's going on. And I'm going to adopt a slightly different technique to that which was used by Theodore, um, so that you can uh, see the alternative ways of doing things. I think you'll find that when you go through the process, you'll see how it very, very closely aligns to a standard um, CRUD type of setup within Wapler that you've seen before. Particularly if you look at the likes of the uh, videos done by Side Street, uh, my fellow ambassador, where he uses data, data, data detail elements you'll see how really the pouch system follows that very very closely the elements are slightly different names the application is very very slightly different but overall the procedures are the same so before i make any starts at all i'm just going to go into uh, app i'm going to go into data and we're going to look at the available elements there and we're going to be using the pouch db element the pouch db view and the pouch db detail now, they'll probably be new to a lot of them, you, but uh, they're actually not new if you think about where their equivalents are. Because your pouch DB component is really just the local equivalent of your server connect. So that's where you create your server connection to your uh, outside database. Your pouch view is very, very similar to your app connect data view in terms of that will present you the data that is being pulled through the data connection that you have within the pouch db connection and then lastly you have the data detail sorry the pouch db detail which is very very similar to the um, standard app connect data detail element only obviously this de it uh, impacts on the local pouch data as opposed to the uh, data that's on a server so I'm going to start with just adding the three basic components that we're going to be using, our pouch and the database is to connect to our DB connection. Because don't forget we have this already created for my former video couch. We have our at my DB database with my user and we have the DB connection and the collection of notes. I'm just going to add in also the data, sorry, the pouch view that's your db connection and that's the notes collection again i'm just going to save that and last but not least i'm going to add in that third pouch element of the pouch db detail and that will be the db connection collection notes and just to sort of fork from the um, tutorial done by theodore i'm not going to use the dirty or the stale as to as the term they use element marker on there i'm just going to have these things auto update so there's the three basic components we've got we have effectively to align it to the previous stuff we have our data collection our data connection we have our data view and we have our data detail so the first thing we're going to try and do is get some data in there well i can tell you now actually there is some already some data in the system so i'm actually going to do things slightly different order than we did with um previous tutorial i'm just going to show you what data is already sitting within our database so sorry i'm we need uh, a container drag that down here because that's just the way i roll row column we're going to our generator we're going to do a bootstrap table we're going to link that to that pouch db view in other words our data view data give it the treatment as i tend to refer it to uh click ok 
And there we are, we see we have some uh, some data in there. Gibberish, yes, but nevertheless data. So there's our view data. We need to be able to add new data in there, obviously. So let's look at how we're going to do that. I'm going to, first of all, just add a row before. I'm going to add a column. I'm going to add a button. And this button will be add note. And we'll just colorize it so we can actually see it properly on the screen. And I'm just going to quickly give that a bit of top margin just to pull it off the top of the screen. I'm going to save that because I like to save quite regularly. Uh, let's go to that button actually. I'll just add a bit of margin down there just purely for cosmetic reasons. So, right, we had notes. How are we going to add a note? We're going to do that through a modal. So let's just add a dynamic model first. I want to call that model add note. Just so we know what that's do. Give it a title of add note. I'm going to get rid of that close button as unnecessary. We're going to rename that to add. I'm going to get rid of that paragraph, don't need it, and I'm going to add in a form. Now, technically, you don't need a form here um, because you're adapting directly within a flow to stuff this data into your database. You're not actually sending it as such. We're not posting it, so there's no need for a form. However, by putting the data in a form, it means we can use that form reset action within a flow, which just makes the management of the, uh, the form a little bit easier. So not essential, but I would say advisable. And then I'm going to add two things. I'm going to add, first of all, a horizontal input. And now another. After that, horizontal. And we're going to add a text area. So this one is our title. This one is our content. We'll just get rid of those prompts because we don't need them. And then now if I go into the actual boxes themselves, and I think I just accidentally deleted the wrong thing there. My apologies. Give this a name. So that's going to be input title. Its name is title. And then we're going again. We're just following this structure that we have over in our notes collection. Our text box is input content and our name of it is going to be content. So we have created a form. We've got an add button. Now we've realized that add button is not within that form. That doesn't matter because we're never submitting the form. All we're doing is using the click action. So what happens when we click that button? Well, that's really simple. We're going to add a very simple flow, dynamic event, mouse click. We're going to add a flow. Within that flow, we're going to add an action. That action is going to be a database action. It's going to be a pout DB insert. We're going to be choosing our DB connection. We're going to ask for the insert. In, inserting into notes so we've got our two columns from our notes and the volumes we're going to be inserting are the values of those two forms that we had within the model so it's going to the value of the title is going to be the value of that title input box and the value of content is going to be the value of the content box could be much easier than that. Save that. What else do I want to do? Well, after that, let's just do a little bit of cleanup. So add another action, flow control and run. And what we're going to do there is I'm going to clear that form. That's why it's handy to have it within the form, even though it's not necessary. And we're going to hide that model. So let's save that. 
that's basically our add note routine completed nothing complicated in there really very very similar to that which you would use if you were using um a normal server action just added a little bit of color to that heading just so it uh, looks a bit prettier so next one we need to do is we're going to have a edit note but i'm also just to extend this a little further i'm going to add a delete note action as well so we can't use the row click that's used within Teodor's instruction because we need to do two actions on that click so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just add a couple more cells in here two cells and let's add corresponding heads obviously otherwise we end up with everything out of balance take those headers out because they're not needed and then what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add some buttons into those cells having added a button i'm just going to create a little bit more working space there we're in the button sorry i'm going to move it to the back of the cell because i just want to remove that text out of there and also that text out of there so all we can see is the buttons i'm now going to add a font awesome icon icon into there and i'm going to use the pencil or the pen uh edit icon i'm just going to pop that up to be a bit bigger and i'm going to give it a little bit of color by going into style success and I'm now going to remove the text out of where it says button. So that's our edit. And then while we're busy, we might as well finish off the button there. So I'm going to do a font auto so I go on again. I'm going to use a trash bin this time. I'm going to make that all sorts of decent size. Probably not the best trash to use. We'll use. size let's make the button green sorry the button red this time for a delete toy uh, let's put it in danger and again let's just remove that text out of that button there so now we have our two icons we have a edit icon and a delete icon I'm just going to save at that stage now because what we need to do now is to create our update routine and our delete routine so to do the update update i'm going to do exactly the same as theodore actually did because it makes sense i'm just going to duplicate that add note i'm going to change its name to modal update note but now we're going to add the, some content into that screen so that we can edit it so I'm just going to change those buttons so when we open that note what we want is to give it a attribute input value and that value is going to come from our data detail effectively and you're probably asking well hang on a minute how do we tie that into the which record we're going well we'll come to that in a moment so again dynamic attributes input value and then we're going into our data data detail and we're going to pick our content let's save that then now with our button here we've got our within our hang on a moment we're down here then this button we've got an action that's going to be a click action so in our click action we're going to go and do dynamic events mouse click and at mouse click we're going to go into a, a run 
an auction is going to be, we are going to go into our pouch, data detail, select. And our doc ID is going to be from the ID from that repeat. So that's how we tie that record in to our um, table to ensure that when we click on the table, that is the correct record that's shown. And when we've done that, we obviously then obviously need to do a little bit more. We need to go into uh, open our model. Model update. We've got to show that. And let's save. So now we know that we click on that. It's going to open that model. We're going to see the data that's currently in there. What we need to do now is to add a save, icon, a save option into that model. So again, we're going to do it from that save button. We're just going to go into our... Remember, we still have an action in there from the previous one because this has been cloned. So we just take that out totally. What's going to happen here is we're going to execute. We're going to add an action. We're going to go into our database actions. And this is going to be a pouch data update. Our, and this, sorry, come on. We're going to connect our connection. We're going to select our notes. And again, we're going to be exactly the same as before. Um, we're going to be picking our values from that update notes table. So there's our values that are there, but this time we also need a condition. And that condition is again coming from our data detail, data ID. Because we know that's pointing the correct record because we set that when we open the model itself. Let's save that. Now at this point, I think I should probably consider doing a test to make sure that everything's working correctly. Um, and then once we do that, we can uh, move on to the next stage. So let's hit open in browser. There we have our details. I'm going to add a new note. That tells me straight away I've forgotten to click action on that. My apologies on that button. Just a minor oversight. We've got a button action to set on that. Toggle action is to modal. And the modal we're going to add is add note. Save that. Let's fire that up again. Add note. Click Add, and if we go down the list here, this is Demo Note, Note 1. So we know that's working correctly. <coughs> we now to make, need to do exactly the same fix on the next button. So you'll see that in here, what I should have done in that button was to toggle action is modal. Modal to open is the update. Let's save that. It's going to refresh that screen and now if we click on that we see there's an update and we also can see that there is a a fault there of some sort because that has not got the data in that it should have so what's the problem we're clicking on there we should now have an action down here and for some reason that i've either forgotten that or it hasn't been saved i suspect the former add an action what that should be doing is flow control run and it should be having the post db detail select doc id should be the data detail so you know in that case it will be the id of the repeat body selecting the correct one and then the next thing we need to do is to show that modal let's just make sure that's saved yep it has let's fire that up again that's better that's 
we've got to close the modal on the end of there. I can see there that the data has changed. So again, <coughs> dead easy fix. So, but save button on the modal two update note. Save button. We need to just add an action. We need to run the model close and we'll, we'll reset the form while we're busy. So reset the form. We will then, <coughs> excuse me, uh, hide the model, save that, Let's go back into our screen. And now, there we are, see that note is updating exactly as it should. So our next trick is uh, we need to look at this delete. So I really could do with getting rid of some of this uh, rubbish test data that I've put in uh, on previous occasions. So let's on this one, uh, we'll still use a modal, I think. We'll pop up a modal, but we'll just have a delete button on it. So I'm going to duplicate our update. Let's call that delete note. I like to make anything to do with deletes red. So let's just give that a nice red head and a red button. I don't know why on earth I did that. Sorry, red button. <coughs> we'll actually leave that as a form if you want. We can just stick them as read only so we can actually see what's happening there. You notice with the text area, you need to set that through dynamic attributes. So, what should happen now is that if we click on this button, All I want to do at this stage is to show that it works is I want to open a modal and did I rename that modal? No, let's sorry, I'm gonna modal delete. Let's go back down to our button. We want to open a modal and we're going to open modal delete save that let's just pop this up and just make sure everything's working as it should so if I do that note one is certainly not working correctly so let's have a look and see what's going wrong there well it would help if we actually added the dynamic event of mouse click Add action, uh, flow control, run. And what we want to do is we want to select the appropriate CouchDB record that matches the repeat index of the record on which we've just clicked. So let's have a look and see there. Now it shows us a record as we'd expect can't change it because we set it as read only so all we need to do now is add that delete action that at the end of that routine um, into that no actually we'll add it to the button shall we so that's going to be delete and within that we're going to have our mouse click, execute action database, database pouch db delete. Del oops, sorry, I will keep forgetting that that connection doesn't link in automatically. Notes collection, we want the ID to be deleted to be the one that is linked to our pouch db detail id which we've selected on that click 
So let's save that. Let's fire that up again. Not quite sure what happened there. So now if we want to get rid of Retia, <laughs> you can see that that has deleted. And I'm just going to quickly re remind myself that uh, at the end of this delete action, we should really close our model as well. So just going to add in the simple flow control run model hide. So that's it. Now we have our action set up. So let's just go right through that process now. There's our database. We can add a new note. Okay, we can add that. And there we are, new note, new one. We can edit that. New one here, and we can delete that as well, just by clicking the delete. So there we are, there's our three basic functions. What we're, we're deleting, we're updating, and we are inserting. Obviously, we also have within the list itself, that is our um, read action. So we've got our, our, our CRUD4, shall we call it. We've got our creation, we've got our reading, we've got our updating, and we've got our deletion. Um, that's all of the functions that we need. And of course, this now will be replicated to our CouchDB database. So I hope to see you in the next module.